Hello everybody, my name is Nick Lesanowski. I'm the host here at Daybreak. We have a great show today, and I'm glad that you could join us. So, welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of Daybreak. Uh, thank you for joining us so early in the morning, as always, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we have two amazing guests today, one from the amazing town of Sherborne, Massachusetts, and one from the amazing town of Normal, Massachusetts. We're going to have the same topic as we did last episode. It's about theater and people acting and things like that. So, but we've got a broader, uh, broader range now. Also, this is the first episode of the YouTube channel and everything, so please go check out the YouTube channel. We have 30 subscribers. Um, if you subscribe, it actually does help because it helps us uh, get our videos recommended more. The stuff that's on there is like, currently there's a channel, um, like a breakdown and the commercial, which if you didn't see the commercial, you can look it up on my um, account or you can just look it up on YouTube. It's a, a one minute commercial for season three. But yeah, so I've got Sterling Williams here from Dover, Massachusetts, and I'm going to invite him on. Oh no. Sorry. So Sterling is again from the amazing town of Dover, uh, Sherborne, Massachusetts, and we're here to talk about his roles in theater. Hey, Sterling. Hey, Nick. How are you doing? Good, you? Good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so, you have never been on the show before. So, how have you been getting along and just existing right now during with the coronavirus pandemic and everything that's happening? Everything okay? Are you? Are you? Are you well? Are you well? Is your family okay? Is like, everything fine? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm doing okay. You know, out of school work. Just trying to focus on that right now. Some of my teachers give me more work than I actually we had during the school year. So are you are you getting more a bigger workload than you are than you were before the quarantine started? For Spanish, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm currently basically in homework debt trying to pay trying to do it before the school year ends. Oh. And uh, it's on. when does it so I think my school year ends a week other than yours. Does yours end next next week? Uh what's the year? The seventh, is it? I think it ends next week, yeah. Okay, yeah, mine is in the week after this one, so yeah. But I, you must be, like, counting down the hours left till school's over, and unfortunately, you can't have that, like, rush out of school thing where you're just like, it's summer, but, you know, you can rush out of your house and scream at summer. Uh, anyways, so we're going to talk about your role in productions, theaters, and plays. So what productions have you been in? Oh, I have been in Seuss Odyssey, Little Mermaid, Murder Actually, Chicago, A Midsummer's Night Dream, and kind of Mamma Mia. It was canceled because of quarantine. Yeah. We were supposed to do the week after. We were supposed to do the next week until school was canceled. Are you going to take that play back up next year, the next school year? You mean do it again, or is the school going to do it again? Is the school going to do it again? I have no idea. Probably. We spent so much money and resources on it, we'll probably just do it again. Yeah. So, when did you start doing these productions? Like, what age or what grade? I started in seventh grade, so I was probably 12, 13. And Chicago, what, what grade was Chicago? Was Chicago, like, freshman year? That was my freshman year, yeah. yeah. I saw that. That was an amazing... Production. Unfortunately, I was off to like the side corner, so I couldn't really see everything. But it, it the music was awesome. The acting was great. I saw you up there; it was amazing. So, kudos to you on that one. Um, but um, what got you drawn to theater? Were you, were you drawn to theater before seventh grade, or were you, did something happen like, oh, I want to try that? It seems like a new thing to do. Like, what got you interested in it? Well, the funny thing is, I wasn't into theater at all. I was kind of thinking for, I was new to Dover Sherborne, kind of still, so I wasn't really trying to do theater. I was into trying to make movies, but a friend of mine did Shrek the Musical. I think you were here for this. Yeah, you were. The Shrek the Musical was made, and my friend was in it, 
and after I watched it, I wished I was in that musical. And then he basically convinced me to do the Seuss Odyssey play, and I've been in it ever since. So have you just done musicals, or have you done plays and musicals? Plays and musicals. Which one do you like more? Musicals. Is it because of, like, the singing, or, like, why do you like musicals more? Well, it has more people, and just it's a uh, nicer vibe, has a greater vibe to me. I don't know. Uh, energetic. Are you looking for, sorry, when you, so you started in seventh grade, so you started at DSMS, the Overture Middle School, and then you're also doing it in high school. Yep. Was the, what's the difference in the experiences that you had? Is it more formal at the high school and sort of less formal, more casual at the middle school? Is it about the same level of formality as just sort of the level of experience? Like, what's the difference? Um, I think it's also many of the things that you said, but also, like, it's more traditional. It's definitely, like, there are traditions that you didn't get at the middle school that you definitely get at the high school. And, you know, it's definitely more mature than at the middle school. Again, we did cheesy plays and musicals while the... And because of, you know, it is a high school, people more mature, you know, we could touch on the subjects that weren't really touched upon. And that, yeah, basically that's, that's why, that's how I see it. What sort of, tra so when you said traditions earlier, is there like, is that something that they did every single year that they just keep doing? Does the middle school not have traditions when they do their musicals or plays? Yes. What kind of traditions does the high school have? Can't tell you that, my guy. Ah. <laughs> I always sometimes hit that border where they can't tell me anything. Like I had that with Abby. Uh, when she did her episode, she couldn't tell you about your song, but she's coming home later. So, uh, anyways, so since so with the high school and the middle school, were they were the plays and musicals separated by grade, or was it like the whole school got to do one thing? The whole school. So, because you 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 move through grades, so I keep saying so a lot, but the people in the, you eventually move past the people from the middle school, introduce yourself to new people in the high school. Is it? weird to work with seniors as a freshman than it is to work with eighth graders as a seventh grader? Not really. You know, they were pretty chill. Um, I knew some of them previously. I knew a lot of them, actually, and including when some of them were directors in my middle school play. So it wasn't really that unnerving to me. I never really was that uncomfortable around upperclassmen that much because um, I don't care, the high schoolers. And I'm just kind of, I can get along with them. I don't care. And it wasn't really uncomfortable because, you know, they tried to tell us advice or they would talk to us. So, no, it wasn't that bad. It was nice being with the seniors. Yeah. So one thing on your uh, resume or repertoire list that you gave me is that you did um, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And I know Morgan, who I had on last time, did the same play. And I think Grace did that one. How many, how, so how many, so I'm, Morgan and Grace are both freshmen in high school currently. How many mm -hmm. freshmen take part in the plays and musicals at the high school? I probably have to assume 10-ish, maybe a little less. Does the number increase by grade? Like are there more uh, sophomores and freshmen or juniors and sophomores and then more seniors than juniors? Really depends on the year. I know that this school year, there's a whole lot of sophomores and juniors. There are very few seniors and freshmen. And by what I've heard, it's really just very per grade. How many productions do does the school do a year? Because I know when I had TJ on, he did he the school had planned like a musical every or a production every single month. He did one January, February, they're planning one in March. So, because that, that's ridiculous, but uh, how many productions does DSHS do in a school year? We do three, technically. So, we have the fall play, such as Midsummer Night Dream, and we have the spring musical. We also have a spring, a, another spring play. It's a smaller production. And it usually takes place during the musical. So if you're planning to do it at that time, you have to do both productions. Mm -hmm. And that's usually done at the drama fest. And we usually perform at the school for free. 
and then go into drama festivals, wherever it is. Uh, I know that this year we were supposed to do it, but the school wouldn't allow us to go because of COVID. So, yeah. What is the most difficult aspect to acting or being on stage? Is it because I talked with Morgan about this and I talked with her about stage fright. Is stage fright the most difficult aspect is learning your lines? Like what's the most difficult thing for you to do? I think the most difficult thing to me, for me to do is learn my lines. I'm not the best person at remembering things, especially long pieces of dialogue. But, you know, stage fright wasn't really a thing for, isn't that much. I'm not going to say it's not a thing. It's not that much of a thing for me. Hmm. It's just trying to make sure everything is in my head still and that I didn't forget everything I learned through because I did something else and it distracted me. So when I am about to do this show, or I'm about to perform, like at DS, I performed a lot, but when I'm about to do this show, I always get really nervous, even though I know it's a recording and everything is going to be fine. Do you ever get ridiculously nervous before the show, and then during the show, you're perfectly calm and chill and everything's fine? Because that happens to me all the time. Does that happen to you? That happens sometimes, yeah. Like, I'll get nervous right before, but I'm already on stage. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Um, I'll just have to move on with it. Have you ever forgotten a piece of dialogue and you had to have someone come like to say, it's this from like the side of the stage? Never. And I, I remember one time in seventh grade, I, it was the third night of a projection and I com almost completely forgot my whole do dialogue and nobody helped me. And I was just speaking gibberish out of my mouth. Well, at least, at least you had the talent to um, improvise and just come up with your own dialogue with that. Did it? Did your dialogue follow the style of the play? Like, if it was uh, sort of Shakespearean, you have to sort of talk in these weird, twisted sentences. Yep. How many? How many people? Because I know Morgan. And I, I'm gonna refer to her thing a lot, but I got a lot of information from her. Um, when I had Morgan on, she talked about there was this part she forgot to almost go up and do something, so I'm gonna do it for her. And there's a, also some people who almost forgot their lines. Has there ever been a major, like, I know the saying, the show must go on. Um, is there ever, was there ever, like, a major thing that went wrong that you had to sort of work past? Um, to my knowledge, not that I can remember specifically. We had a couple goofs, but nothing that was like, oh, no, we, we have to keep going as if nothing happened. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes an accident might happen, but they never really interferes with the show. People don't really notice. Uh -huh. And what is the most fun thing to do during a play? Is it to actually say the things you know and get the confidence of completing it? Is it for musicals, the singing, the acting, moving around to costumes? Like, what's your, what's your favorite aspect of show business? When you've worked that hard and done stuff with that many people, and when it's actually the night and you perform it and it's well and people actually like it, that's a great feeling for me. Because that way you know it was worth all those months. And yeah. months. How much time do you spend practicing those plays? Like how many months? Probably about, the musical is about three months. The play is maybe about two, what's that? Two, three. How, so when you complete a play, oh jeez. <laughs> Sorry. When you complete a play, um, when you hear the, what, who do you do the play for? Do you do it for yourself? Do you do it for the audience, for your parents? Like, who do you perform for? I would say I perform for, my, for myself mainly. Um, my parents, they're going to be supportive no matter what. Um, I, sometimes the audience isn't, again, I care about the audience, but really it's just, for me, because it's kind of, in a way, my own sport, so I just want to be good at it. Right, yeah. For myself. Is there any advice you'd give a person who wants to just start out in show business or who is in show business already but wants a little bit of help or tips from someone who's experienced such as yourself? Um, I guess first study those lines. If you really want a certain part, you have to work as hard as you can for it. Um and make sure that you can do as much as you can. Don't slack off. If you really want this role, don't slack off on lines. Don't mess up with the dance routines. And if you don't get the role you want, it's okay. It's just a role. 
Um, funny story is that many senior, I know a couple seniors were pissed off because they didn't get any roles in this musical. And some of them quit because of it, which is, was a bad idea to me because it was still fun to do. So, you know, just have fun. Even ensemble can be very fun. That's all I got to say. How many roles, how, how often do you get the role that you apply for? That I applied for? That hasn't happened since what? Probably first grade, oh, sorry, seventh grade, to be honest with you. Is it? I guess. Sorry, what were you going to say? It is very difficult, at least in my grade, to get a good role because we have several great actors in my grade. Is it annoying to see another person get the role that you really wanted and you prepared for, but you have to go and do a different role? Is that is that a big problem, or do you just sort of okay? That's what it is. I just have to get past it. Yeah, the second, the latter. I have to get past it. You know. I can't, I'm not going to go arguing with Mr. Herman or Ms. McKay or Mr. Walker. So I'm like, oh, I wanted this role. I wanted this role. I didn't work hard enough. I can't blame other people. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do to change it. So just got to do better next time. That is a fine line. Um, that's a weird way of saying that, but it does a very good, I don't want to say sentiment because I don't know if that's the right word, but um, have you ever had to uh act in a play or perform in a musical that was not directed by the school. Because I know Morgan, she had to, she went in North Carolina, she had a production company that did a play for her. Did you have, did you ever have an opportunity to do that? Do you want to do that? I mean, it'd be cool, but I never really was, I haven't really looked that much. And I was just focused on the school basically. Because it was always convenient because I'm always going to the school, so. Are you looking for a career in acting or musicals or, like, directing? No? No, nah, man. What, what are you looking for a career in, if you, if, if you can say that, if you want to? Uh, looking for a career in law and politics, basically. Hmm. What, what kind of law? Uh, for a couple of years, litigation. Oh, wow. But I hope to uh, uh, rise to what you said in the contract we could not talk about. So. Yes, no politics. Um, but that, yeah, so is there a reason why you don't want to pursue acting? Is it just something that you do for the for fun during your school just to really stress? Or is it just a thing you do just for fun and you just want to do something else with your life later on? Uh, you know, I do it for fun. Uh, I like people who I hang out with during it. Uh, I like it more than any other sport, so... That's basically the main reason I do it. Keep my time occupied and just have some fun. Yeah. So if the audience has any questions, please put them in the question thing. Um, because we only have two minutes left, so I want to make sure that the... Because there's a delay between me speaking and then hearing it, so I want them to be able to have the opportunity to ask questions because the comments are off. So is there a play that you want the school to do like can, can you recommend a, a production to the school and they see if they can do it with the people they have um i've always said i've always i want school to do the wiz or lion king the problem with the lion king is that it's copyrighted and still performed by disney right or by broadway so technically they're not allowed to do it i guess and the ways they've already done, or they just can't do it. I don't know. And is there anything that you don't like about doing plays that you find very frustrating? Hmm. I think just the time, because you're up, or just the amount of hours you put in every single day. Um, because it can get very annoying. And as much as you love doing it, you're always like, oh my God, just 30 more minutes until this is over <laughs> and I can go home. Um, but yeah, it's basically just the amount of time you put into it. It's annoying, but at the same time, a lot of times it can be the fun part. Because remember last year when I did Chicago, it was more fun doing the rehearsals than it was doing the actual play. We have one final question. This is from the audience member. Do you have 
a famous actor who you admire or channel during your performances? Um, I think, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name now, but his name was Rob, this is an old actor, probably not know what else this is, but he was named Rob Williams, I think. And he was a classic actor from like the early 1900s. And he was growing up in a time where his people were depicted as, because I'm the only black person in my plays in the musicals. And he was one of the first black actors in musicals in shows and plays and movies in general. And he tried to show a great depiction of people and didn't try to show them as negative, just show them as human. And whenever I'm in that role, I try to think of him and what he had to do to make sure that he didn't show a negative depiction. So that's what I think of sometimes. Well, that's a very good thing to think of. And yes, that, that's a great choice for an actor to channel. But thank you so much for coming on. We have reached our time limit, but this was an amazing interview. We had a good conversation. Uh, I will post your Instagram in the description of this. So if people want to check you out or anything, look at images or whatever, they can do that. But uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on, Sterling. Uh, thank you, Nick. Have a good day. You too. Thank you for having me. So that was Sterling Williams from Sherborne, Massachusetts. He's one of my old friends from there. Unfortunately, I don't live there anymore, but I still keep in contact with all of them. So again, this is a theater theme play. I try to do themed shows so that we can have some consistency between the guests. So the next guest I have is from where I live. Her name is Natalie Lacey, and she is also going to be talking about theaters and productions with us today. So. Please give a warm welcome to Norwell's Natalie Lacey. Hey, Natalie. Hi. So, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are you feeling well and everyone safe and not sick and everything? Yeah, I'm fine. So, what productions have you been in? Okay. Um, I have been in, I'll just make sure I remember them all. I've been in Mary Poppins, Shrek. Little Mermaid, Newsies, Wizard of Oz, twice, Jesus Christ Superstar, Heathers, um, I'm currently in Into the Woods, I'm definitely forgetting some, Assassins, Beauty and the Beast, is that everything on the list? Uh, that is 12 productions in total, that is, if you hand it to anyone, you're gonna be like, wow, this, I'm gonna hire this person for my next play, that is... A fantastic resume. Thank you. When did, when did you start doing theater? Um, I started when I was 10. And it was just like a little summer camp. It wasn't like a real big show or anything. It was just like a it was like Aladdin Junior. Uh, I, yes, I was going to fifth grade. So I was 10. When did you start doing the productions in the school in sixth grade or starting in seventh grade? When did you start? I don't do a lot of theater at Norwell. I did I did Little Mermaid when they did it um, in sixth grade. And then I just kind of, I don't have a lot of time because I do a lot of shows outside of school. Right. And I try to do it every year, but like the clashes are just too bad. Um, so that's one of the only productions I've done with the school, I think. Yeah, it is. So you, you said that you don't do a lot of school. So do you do them with a private company or is it the theater camp that you mentioned? Like what, how do you, what's your platform where you perform um i do a lot of theater at a theater school that i go to it's like an after school program um i spend a lot of time there do a lot of shows there and then i also do theater at like various regional and community theater companies like around the area um like in bridgewater mansfield brockton um norton those places you you go everywhere and do everything this is um what got you drawn to theater in the first place? Because you said you started at 10 and then you did like one school production. Like, so what got you drawn to that in the first place? Did your parents want you to do it? Did you do it for your own self? Um, it was kind of my decision to start doing it because my dad directs the shows to the high school. Oh. And that kind of got me interested in theater. Oh, um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't really my parents. It was kind of my decision. Um, yeah, I just really liked it. I liked seeing his shows at the high school and it looked really fun. I saw one of his shows. It was very good. It was a one. It was a short one. 
Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was amazing it was before the quarantine started. But yeah, he, he uh, does great plays. Um, so you obviously have a great resume. So are you ever going to hand that resume to an employer? Do you, do you want a career in acting or filmmaking or anything like that? Um, I would like to try to pursue a theater, a career in theater. Um, it's a really hard, it's a really hard like career to career path to take. Um, but I would like to try to do it. Like going into college, I'd like to major in theater. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, it's really, it's a hard career path, but yeah. I would like to try to pursue it. Do you ever see yourself walking down the red carpet after a movie has gone and going to the Golden Globes and like you're just going insane and everything? I wish. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, do you have a college in mind that you want to go to? Because uh, when I talked to Grace, she said she wanted to go into filmmaking and she wanted to go to California. Do you have a school you have in mind already? Um, well, a dream school that I'd want to go to would be um, Tisch, which is like the theater program at NYU. Oh. That's really hard to get into, though. And I have, like, I'd like to go to BOCA, which is Boston Conservatory. It's in Boston, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, thought, also some I other... thought it was in Springfield. I didn't know. <laughs> Um, there's also some other schools in New York, like Pace and uh, Marymount that I'm interested in, because a lot of my friends go there, like my senior friends who have graduated. Um, yeah, schools like that. Are there, what you do, so you don't do plays in school, um, when you do them for like the camps and everything, the private companies, do you see any people from Norwell that also do those as well? Or is it just a wide array of people from all over the state or other places? Um, it's a lot. I don't really see a lot of people from Norwell. It's kind of like a separate thing. Um, a lot of the same people do shows like in Bridgewater, Mansfield, like a lot of the adults who do those shows, like they all kind of do them in Mansfield and Bridgewater. They do the same. They do theater there. Um, but like at my theater school, it's all the same kids doing the same shows every year and none of them go to Norwell. So it's different people. Yeah. Is it interesting to build your relationships with people from completely different towns and is it when you co when so you go to normal high school so you have a relationship with people there but then you also go to the companies and you have relationships there so is it interesting to see the personalities differ from town to town yeah it really is um yeah my friends at my theater school are really different from my friends at norwell and um yeah, a lot of the other teenagers and adults that I meet through other programs are very different from people that I make friends with at Norwell. Um, so it is kind of interesting to see the difference between people who do theater and people who don't do theater. <laughs> do, does your dad ever help direct some of the plays that you do outside of Norwell? Or does he, or does it just, just the company that does that? He does not, but he has coached me a couple of times with a monologue, like going into an audition, but he doesn't help with the companies. How much time do you spend rehearsing for these plays and how much time is it spent at home and how much time is it spent at the places that you're going to perform? Um, a lot of time at home, it's just like practicing songs, like memorizing lines. Memorizing lines isn't really that hard. Um, so I don't spend a lot of time on that at home, but like, I mean, obviously, because of quarantine, I'm not doing this anymore. But I usually had rehearsal for, like, different shows almost every night of the week. So for, like, three hours at a time. So, like, except for, like, Fridays, I would have rehearsal from, like, 7 to 10 or, like, 6 to 9, something like that. Do you ever do – so you do productions, but how many musicals have you done compared to plays? I have never done a full play. I have done a lot of, like – shortened versions of plays like medleys of plays but i've never done a full play hmm. do you ever want to do a full play or is it do you just like musicals or? i really want to do a full play i like acting the most i mean like i love musicals they're so fun but acting is my favorite of the three things you need to be able to do to do musical theater right. so i really do want to do a full play at some point hmm. is there a play you have in mind that you want to recommend or is there something that they're planning on doing that you're okay i want to do that thing um, no plays that I have in mind, because I don't know a lot about, about a lot of stuff about plays, but, um, I've always wanted to do Carrie. Um, I'm, I can't suggest that, like, it just kind of, they, like, at my theater school, they just kind of tell us what full production we're going to do. Um, but I hope someday before I graduate, we do that show. And I'm going to read some questions from the audience. 
Um, how do you find the time to get involved in? Because yes, yeah, so how do you find how do you find the time to get involved in twelve productions? Like, where where does that time come? Because you have school, you have homework, you have. Because I I know that the school homework has increased since quarantine, but we also usually have a lot of homework anyways. So where do you find the time to rehearse? Like, do you stay up till like midnight rehearsing lines? And you in bed, you're just like, I know the thing. Like, <laughs> um, I usually do. I spend my, this is why I don't do any like after school activities because of this. I usually finish school like two or whatever. And then I do my homework from like two to four ish. And then I go to rehearsal at night. And then if I still have homework after that or studying to do, I just have to stay up late and deal with it. So I remember when I didn't do homework, I had the fail safe of knowing that all of my classes that involved homework always happened after my like study block. Do you take, an amount of courses that doesn't allow you to have a study block. Like, do you take any, I don't know if normal has any theater classes, but if they're, if you do, oh yeah, they do, they have a drama program. Do you have, <laughs> I knew that. Um, does do you ever take part in those that takes away from other classes? Like how does your school day balance work? Um, I don't get any study blocks because I take art and I'm also in the acting ensemble. But I'm dropping acting ensemble next year because I want to take AP European history, so I don't have time for that anymore. Same. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't have any time for study blocks because of that stuff, but like that stuff's fun, so it's fine. What's the most difficult aspect of performing? So you've only done like a medley of plays, so let's talk about musicals. What is the most difficult aspect of doing a musical? Um, I think when it... This kind of goes for, this could be for a play or a musical. I think one of the hardest parts is um, learning how to get comfortable with a role and learning to like not care what people think about your decisions right, yeah. or um, like how you're choosing to play the character. Like if, you're con if your character is like really zany or something, like not caring what people are going to think of it. Um, I think that's probably one of the hardest parts for me, like getting over my insecurities about a character. When doing a musical, do you, are you the character, are you sometimes the character that has to sing or do you choose, do you get cast as a character that's sort of a background character that doesn't involve singing? Um, it varies. Sometimes I'm a character that has to sing, sometimes I'm just in the ensemble. It just kind of depends. <laughs> do you enjoy the singing aspect? Because I, I like singing by myself, just singing to my favorite songs. But if I had to go up on stage in a production I would be freaking out. So do you, is, is the singing fun? Is it more stressful than just learning lines? Is there, because you have to also have the correct pitch and everything. I have terrible pitch abilities. I, I will go off key 100% of the time. So is it more difficult to remember what key you have to be in and the notes and everything? Like, how does that work? Um, it, it, singing a solo by yourself is definitely really nerve wracking. Um, I've started like, as I've been doing more and more theater and getting older, it's gotten easier to do stuff like that. Um, staying on correct pitch isn't really something that's, like, super challenging, I guess, because, like, you have the accompaniment, so you have, like, the right key you're listening to it. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's intimidating because you're singing by yourself, so you don't have anyone to, like, if you mess up, you mess up, and you're just kind of, yeah. like, there. So must go on. Um, this is going to receive a little bit of a weird question, but there's a stage in everyone's life where their voice changes and you have the ability to voice crack. Did you have to figure out at that age, I think it's around 13, that you have to sort of figure out the range that you can go where it's safe and then try to expand that? How do you go super high notes, easily transition between chest voice and head voice and not voice crack? <laughs> My some people don't have this problem like some people can mix really well so their transition is like beautiful like there's no cracks no nothing um but that is not something that i can do so my transition from chest voice to head voice is sometimes like really rough and they sound very different like my chest voice is very like i don't know it's like loud and i don't know like tall if that's the right way to describe it. it's not very bright and but then my head voice is like the complete opposite of that so um they sound very different and learning I'm still learning how to like transition well and I'm trying to expand my belt and get a stronger mix so my transition's not so bad I'm still working on that but um working with it on stage and with songs that 
transition a lot is difficult and it's just something that I'm not very good at, but I am working on it. I, I, well, I can imagine that you'll get better over the four years you have in high school. Um, and you also have another question from the audience. Uh, uh, audience member asked, do you have a promo package with a headshot, resume, or playbills? I don't really know what that means, but maybe you do. I'm not 100% sure what that means. I have a headshot and a resume to, like, hand to people when I'm auditioning. I don't really know what a promo, I don't know what that is. <laughs> is it a fun feeling to just hand them a list of, or a piece of paper that's, like, completely filled of different full of different plays and everything like this is my resume can you please cast me is it is that is that like a because you know that they're gonna cast you because you've been in a ridiculous amount of plays is it ever like uh is it ever like a fun feeling people like oh this feels awesome like giving something to someone like i'm gonna get this yeah <laughs> fun feeling um it's kind of nice when you give someone your resume and they're like oh wow like you've done a lot of things you've been a lot of places that's kind of nice um yeah it's cool to have a lot of shows um yeah it's a nice feeling. <laughs> What's the most fun aspect of doing a production for you? I don't know. I like so many parts of it. I think the people. I love my friends, the people who do theater with me. Um, I don't know. I just love all of it. I love performing. Um, I think if I had to pick one, I'd pick the people I do it with and the friends that I made, like the connections I made through theater. So your your sister, she, um, she also does Sarah Lacey. She also does product, uh, plays, and I looked on both Instagrams. And I'm like, wow, this is a lot of pictures. Um, and I see the uh, the stories all the time of the pictures of you guys in plays. Is it interesting? Do you ever work with your sister on a play together at the same time, or do you do differently? And how do you do? You just rehearse with each other casually, like how does that work? We always do the work. I don't think no. We've never done a show. I've never done a show that Sarah's not in. We're always, we always do the same show. So she has the same resume as me. Um, we just kind of like, it's nice because I have someone to rehearse lines with right. and I have someone to like practice choreography with and stuff like that. So it's nice to have someone who's in the same show as me, like knows the same stuff as me. It's nice. And I actually have a question from the audience. Uh, how... Oh, never mind. It's just a comment. Um, um, what is a play that you've done that you wish to do again or that you don't want to do again because it didn't go well what what is the biggest goof that has ever happened on a live stage with a production okay um when i did trek i was like i, th I was like 12 i think i did trek and one I, I can't i think it was like the second weekend of performances we were in the middle of just like a dance number and one of the guys like broke his leg like really bad like he like snapped on stage oh. um i was like right next to him i didn't really know what to do because i was like little and i was like oh my god i just have to keep that, going that, um, that is traumatizing oh god if i was there i'd just faint that's it i'm out yeah it was yeah i we had like we were like holding our final poses and he was like on the ground and it was terrible someone dragged him off stage it was fine we kept going but i didn't really know what to do <laughs> going yeah what did the audience think? Was the audience I don't like, know. What the hell just happened? <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh God, I did not expect that answer. <laughs> um, for our final question, I I can't get that in my head on my head. Um, for the final question before we go into our game, um, what is something that you'd recommend to someone who wants to get into plays or musicals right now? Um, I think this is sort of similar to what I said when you asked me what the most difficult part of theater is. I think that anyone who wants to go into theater needs to learn to be selfless and just kind of like not care what people are going to think about you because you're going to feel stupid a lot of the time. And if you feel stupid, you're probably doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll be great as a... Uh... <laughs> um... Anyways, that is all the time we have for the interview, but we do have a game, as I told you before. And this game gets great reviews all the, every time we do it. And you said that you're probably not going to be good at it, but no audience member is ever good at this game. So <laughs> you're going to be fine. Um, okay. The, the number to beat, I think, is three, three correct answers. So we have four here. So if you get all of them correct, you're going to be the highest numbered person. Uh, I will turn on commenting now so people can comment. Actually, no, it blocks your face. 
that is the point of it. So if you actually, if you want to guess the song, please put it in the questions and I'll read them when I get them. But the rules of the game. So the way this works, if you haven't seen the show before, is I will read one line for and see if you can get the song, if you can guess the song name after me reading one line of the verse, you get three points. If you can guess the song by me reading three lines, you get two points. And if I read the whole verse, you get one point. If you can't get it after that, no points. Um, and I actually have a image thing that I did because I bored a lot of guess that song. <laughs> Um, I, I have a, I, I've tried to sometimes mimic Jimmy Fallon, he has all these cards that he does and I can't, I don't have the proper equipment to do animations, so I just have pictures, but, so, do you understand the rules? So, hang on, can you say it one more time? Yeah, so I have the song lyrics here, I will read the lyrics without any music behind me, and if you can guess the song after me reading one line of the verse, you get three points. If you guess it after me reading three lines, you get two points. And if you can guess it after me reading the whole verse, you get one point. If you can't get it after that, zero points. Okay. All right. First song. Here we go. Okay. Easy come, easy go. That's just how you live. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> All right. It's going to be difficult because I, I know these songs and I want to sing them. All right, easy come, easy go. That's just how you live. Oh, take, take, take it all, but you never do. Should have known you was trouble from the first kiss. I recognize it. I just don't know what it is. All right, so I'll read the full verse. Easy come, easy go. That's just how you live. Oh, take, take, take it all, but you never give. Should have known you was trouble from the first kiss. Had your eyes wide open. Why were they open? I'm 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 saying them in the tempo too. God. Oh um. Oh, what's the title? Who's the artist? I I give you. A... Is it Bruno Mars? It is Bruno Mars. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember the chorus. See if I can remember the name. Oh, I don't remember the name of the song. I know what song it is. I just don't know what it's called. So, but I don't know. <laughs> Grenade. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I knew you knew it. It's like one of those things you have it, but you just, I, you can't say it. I've had that happen yeah. so many times. All right, so I'll give you half a point because you got the artist. Okay. <laughs> All right, next song. By the way, fun fact, this song is actually written by a country artist um, and then donated to her. All right, so. You're probably not going to get this one, but um, no. the lines are very short. But um, okay, here we go. First line, don't need permission. Nope. Yeah. No idea. Don't need permission made by decision to test my limits because it's my business. I don't know. All right, full verse. Don't need permission made my decision to test my limits because it's my business. God has my witness. Start what I finished. Don't need to. Don't need no hold up taking control of this moment. I'm locked and loaded, completely focused, my mind is open. I recognize it. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm going to have to say I don't know, but um, I, I, guess I recognize it. I just don't know what it is. Want to try and guess the artist? No. <laughs> All right, it is Ariana Grande. And <sighs> Dangerous Woman is the only oh, song that I really know by her. Uh, I, try, <laughs> I tried... I don't listen to pop music, really. I listen to stuff before 1999. I like 60s, 70s, and 80s, so I don't really know this music. So I have to, <laughs> I have to think, I'm like, what is popular? Um, I feel like we're Mars. All right, so this is definitely an old one. It's by one of the best selling artists of all time. Here we go. Okay, the warden threw a party in the county jail. I don't know. The warden threw a party in the county jail. The prison band was there, and they began to wail. The band was jumping. And, ugh, the band was jumping, and the joint began to swing. Is it Jailhouse Rock? Yes. Yes. I didn't know if you'd get that. Jailhouse Rock, Elvis <laughs> Presley. I actually love that song. <laughs> um, all right, and then the final song. You actually might tie if you get this one because you had two half points, and then if you get this next one, all right. This is by I can't tell you. <sighs> Right. Um, yeah. Some people guess Elvis. So, okay. When I get older, losing my hair. 
I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing it. I really need to fight that urge. Okay. <laughs> when I get older, losing my hair, many years from now, will you be standing? Oh, sending me Valentine. All right. Still don't know. <laughs> Last one. Full verse. When I get old, when I get older, losing my hair, many years from now, will you still be sending me a Valentine birthday greetings bottle of wine? I have no idea. One of our audience members got it. Okay, it is When I'm 64 by the Beatles. It was so hard. I listen to that song all the time. It's so It was so hard for me not to sing that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll put you in second place at two points. Grace Maroney is the all-time winning person. She had three... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, she had three points. You, the Owen Comiskey. This this game is ridiculously fun. Um, <laughs> it is, And... <laughs> If the game is supposed to be for you to guess it without me singing it, but it's so hard for me not to sing it when I listen to it all the time. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I want to keep on track, and this is the second episode where I've actually kept on track with the timing, but um, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It means so much. This is a, a ridiculously fun interview, one of the best episodes I've ever had. Um, so I want to thank you. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, come back on anytime you feel like. But, yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, sorry, my voice. Um, I'm dying. I've been talking for a really long time, but it was super fun. I want to thank everyone who has watched this episode. Uh, this is a super fun episode. I tried to be more loose with the questions in the, in the past. I sort of stuck to the questions and sort of keep it loose. I hope you like the more conversational type of thing we've been doing for this episode. I hope you like the game. We had a lot of audience participation. Um, uh, my, my dad actually got a couple and he got the Beatles and Elvis, so kudos to him. And I want to thank everyone who's been watching all the episodes in the past and who's watched for one season one and season two. I'd like to thank if, you, if there's any subscribers watching, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please go do so. Daybreak colon starring Glissadowski. We have 30 subscribers. Super proud of that. Um, and I am glad just so that you guys can be watching. Um, yes. And so lastly, if you didn't notice, got a haircut, quarantine haircut. I'm sorry, Courtney Haircut. I don't know if that's hashtag, but, you know, I'm trying to be cool. Um, but, uh, so, I have to thank my dad for that. And, yeah, I have to thank everyone for watching. This will be posted on YouTube probably in, like, two or three hours, because it takes me a while to trim down the size and everything, because it's sort of like a screenshot video. So, if you want to, if you missed any part of this episode, or if you want to watch it again, please feel free to still go there and subscribe. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'd also like to dedicate this to my cousins Maeve and Fiona Galligan from Warwick, Rhode Island, who've watched all the episodes, who love watching it, set timers for themselves just to watch. It, it makes me super happy. And I know they're my cousins, but it, it makes me ridiculously happy that people in my family and people everywhere love watching this. So yeah, I'd like to thank all my guests, Nadia Lacey and Sterling Williams from Sherborne and Norm, Massachusetts. Next time we have two amazing guests and I'm not going to tell you who they are because you'll have to find out and watch. So again, thank you so much for watching Daybreak. I hope to catch you next time at 10 o'clock in the morning at Daybreak. Bye everybody.